Let's get this out mm-hmm. of the way. I mean, the first segment of the show was absolutely fantastic. The Quiz Bowl. Because everybody involved in the Quiz Bowl is is uh, fantastic. And uh, even, believe it or not, like when they turned Otis heel and they took away everything that was awesome about him as a babyface, I was like, you, you blokes are out of your minds. He's not back there yet, but he is now, he's gotten close. He's gotten mm-hmm. close. So I'll give it to Otis. Chad Gable is fantastic. Randy Orton and Riddle both play, I was going to say they're characters, but they're just both, you know, themselves. And uh, they're fantastic in these. And you know what? This dork, Kevin Patrick, is the greatest dork. I love this guy. I mean, totally... not, don't call him a dork. Oh, he's a dork? They only hire he you if not you're a, a dork. dork. Oh, get out of he here, is... you geek. No, you don't know anything He was hired to be a dork. That. Since you don't know anything about real sports... Let me tell you what he has been. He's been a thorn in the side of a lot of people. You remember that, especially with Kevin Owens and people like that. One of the reasons why is because Jim Gray, that's who he, to me, he is modeled after almost to a T. The way he was rolling up on people, asking them questions after they lost and being that guy who was a thorn in the side of people. I, he hasn't gone full geek. Byron Saxton bro, well, Byron, is a geek. Bro, Kevin Patrick hold is on no a second. Geek. Just because you're gonna, you can't compare him to Byron Saxton and then conclude you he's not a geek. Are you, who are you comparing poor, this poor guy to, bro? Who do you listen, think is better off? Have you ever watched him the show? The, they only hire you if you're going to be a dork, it. and that's what oh. they do. They hired him to be a dork, and he's a great. Mackenzie he's a great Mitchell's dork. no dork. So anyway, they do this uh, this quiz bowl, and uh, I thought it was absolutely awesome. Except I totally thought they dropped the ball on the most obvious thing ever, which is. <laughs> They're going back and forth, and uh, it ends up being four and two in favor of the heels. And so uh, uh, four or three, actually, is where it was here. So it's Randy Orton's turn. They're down by one. And if they miss it, then the other team gets a chance to uh, to get it right. So uh, Randy Orton asked for the sports, uh, the deal. And uh, they ask a sports question involving Denver, Colorado, which is where they are. And so even though I think in storyline Orton knew the answer, what he did was he pulled the crowd, okay, which is ridiculous because they said you don't have a lifeline because Riddle tried to – he wanted to call somebody or something like that. And so uh, he pulls the crowd, and they all help him with the answer, John Elway. And Chad Gable's like, you can't do that. That's cheating. You can't pull this crowd. That's ridiculous. So the next question – is metric conversions. And the question is, uh, how, how many, many grams are in an ounce? How many grams <laughs> in an ounce? And, uh, you know, straight lace Chad Gable 4.0 GPA. He don't know the answer. And I thought, this is a perfect opportunity to do the same thing that Orton did and pull the crowd. Now, the key is, as long as in real life, you know, he knows what the answer is going to be. You can work it because the answer is 28 grams. And the options were like 12, 16, 28, 32. So what Chad Gable has to act like he doesn't know the answer and he tries to pull the crowd and they'd all be going 16. And so, of course, then he says what the crowd says and he loses. And so they screwed him. It would have been so great. Now, if by chance the crowd's stupid and they're actually helping the heel by chanting 28, then that's when Chad Gable just go, I don't trust you fans. The answer is 16. And then, of course, it turns out it is 28. And then he's even more fierce. I thought, God, how could you have dropped the ball on this? But that was the only problem. This segment was awesome. And uh, anyway, Orton and Riddle win in the end uh, with another weed joke. And, and Chad Gable's all upset, and they keep buzzing this thing, and he's acting like he has a heart attack every time there's a buzz. This segment was just great. It was awesome. So we had two hits and one miss, if you're counting, because the scooter race was just stupid. But you like Orton being the stoner and messing up his own line? <laughs> yeah, he was so stony, he screwed up his line about, you're not the only one who bakes Riddle. Anyway. We had, and with uh, Otis too, and I still I like how ham was a trigger word for Otis. And you're right. Look, this is one thing I've been saying about this ascension of Chad Gable and this team with Otis is the fact that they're slowly, cr- very slowly creeping out more old Otis. And I don't know if we're ever going to get the shakes and weights Otis again. But I hope they're not doing this to 
turn either Chad Cable or Otis on each other. I like them as a team. I think they should stick as a team for as long as possible. And considering they don't have any, might be a good idea. Bro, the guy that wrote this game sounds dumb. If you didn't watch Raw, I don't even want to hear your criticism about this game. This game was awesome. And these fans were super into it. Like when someone chose sports as a category, they're like, yeah! And you can actually see people jumping up and down. This was not crowd sweeting. They loved this segment. No, and it went, the, it went 20 minutes. We've had a lot of opening segments with talking going back and forth that have gone 20 minutes that weren't anywhere near as you know as fun as this so and i also by the way too before we get further into this i'm hour, never gonna get this done but go ahead well hold on because we have a whole rest of the show to talk about this the only thing i really have to say about the rest of this is that hour was not that bad to me i thought they did a good job with everything in it i thought the tag match they came after it was exciting and i thought i know you're gonna bash the first hour but i didn't think it was that bad i thought the problem though came later Later in the show, when he got into the second hour and the third hour, where it was like, oh, God, kill me. I thought they did a good job with the first hour. I thought the rest of it is where you had the problem. All right, let me get going then. So we Yay, have Alpha I'm glad Academy. I'm on the show with you. Why Al- am I even here? Because I'm trying to get this so we can get it on YouTube without having to go through a commercial break. And then you can do all of your thoughts when we come back oh, from the break. Well, why don't you actually let me know this is just Because I do it every week. We had Alpha Academy versus the Street Profits. They went five minutes, and Gable got the pinfall. So keep this in mind, by the way, that they got the the win here. This is a non-title match. We had a Lashley MVP segment in his hometown, and Lashley super over. And so what did they do with Lashley in his hometown? Well, they didn't beat him. That's nice. But other than that, they did nothing. They, nothing. They talked, and we never saw the guy again. We had a god-awful series of segments with Alexa Bliss, who, by the way, a little while ago did an interview asking us to let it play out. Bruh, how long do I have to let this play out? It's been, like, five weeks now, and it's only getting worse. So the more I let it play out, the worse it gets. She cried because they took the replica doll away from her. She talked about how she was trying to control her anger and failed. Eh, whatever. AJ and Damian Priest, non-title match, they got five minutes, and AJ Styles pins him clean in the middle of the ring. It is the fourth straight loss for Damian Priest after he'd been undefeated for a year. They have now beaten him four straight times. Not a fan of this. Elimination Chamber announcement. Uh, they've already thrown in uh, five women. One more will be determined here on this show. Had a Seth Rollins, uh, Kevin Owens deal. They're frenemies. Miz TV with Miz and Maurice and Ray and Dominic. This damn thing went on for like nine hours. Literally built around the baby faces calling Miz a cheater. And Miz insisting he's not a cheater. And finally, Dominic gets in his face. He wants a rematch. Miz gives it to him. They go one minute and 40 seconds, of which one minute is Maurice getting ejected, and then Dominic Mysterio schoolboys him and pins him. Big win for old Dominic here on this show. Bianca beat Nikki Ash. Four minutes, KOD, nothing match. We had an R-Truth, Tamina, Tazawa, Dana Brooke, Reggie segment. They're doing a romance angle with Dana and Reggie. She likes him, but she only wants to be friends He's lost in her voluptuous lips, but then they're chased off again. So this, I can't say this will continue because for all I know, they'll drop it next week. Kevin Owens, Austin Theory. You know, Austin Theory's in the Elimination Chamber after beating Kevin Owens, but it's WWE, so we got to go 50-50. Kevin Owens, nine-minute match, beats him clean in the middle of the ring with the stunner because of course he did. Weren't we just talking about that? And I told you all this would happen, but no one likes to listen to me. We had a Lita-Becky Lynch segment, which, uh, you know, Becky does the old deal. Oh, I, you were my teenage hero. I have so much respect for you. But now I want to beat you, and I'm insulted that you want my title. And long story short, they had a kerfluffle. And uh, Lita laid her out with the twist of fate. And then went up top and hit the moonsault. They gave it all away. Whatever. Doesn't matter. What? They're going to wrestle at the... Uh, at the pay-per-view. Save the moonsault, brother, for Saudi Arabia. What you... Nope. They can't even do that. What? Then... Do you think she's going to win the title? No, but you can at least have a, a near fall off her finally hitting the moonsault after she tried it at the Rumble and was foiled, and then she tries it here, and Becky should have rolled out of the ring. Eh, no, they, they just hit it. Eh. 
Kevin Owens in storyline may not be at WrestleMania, according to Sonya Deville and Adam Pierce. A two night WrestleMania, we may not have a spot for Kevin Owens. That's the storyline. Dewdrop beat Liv Morgan with a Vader bomb. So those of you, uh, you know, hoping for that big Liv Morgan push, you're not going to get it. And uh, then in the main event, Riddle faces Seth Rollins. They go eight minutes, and then Kevin Owens just runs in for the disqualification. Then they come back, and it's now a tag match. Seth and Kevin Owens against Riddle and Randy Orton. They go eight more minutes, and you'll never guess what happens to the number one contenders to the tag team titles, who after four weeks have finally earned their shot at the tag team titles. Seth Rollins curb stomps and pins Riddle clean in the middle of the ring. Because of course he did. That was a show. That was Monday Night Raw. When we come back from the break, Mike, I'm going to allow you to break down every segment that you want to here on this program. And perhaps tell me why Lita should have hit that moonsault, which I thought was ridiculous. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Google Tiger Jackson Wrestler. And then go into images. And then go into GIFs. (laughs) <laughs> he does all these spots where he spins on his head. I'm crying. And I'm supposed to be watching this stupid show, but I just keep watching Tiger Jackson spots on Google. I hereby induct him into the Matt Cleary Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you, Craig. That's two to that's two to zero or whatever. Aye. Okay. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.